We should celebrate this bookshelf, this noble bookshelf. Hi, Andrew, Andrew, we're in our favorite dollar store in all of Brooklyn. The only reason we come to BAM, actually, is because we love this dollar store. Look we, at these deals. We are seeing the Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov, done by the Molly Drama Theater of St. Petersburg. I have it on good authority that St. Petersburg is the Williamsburg. Of, of Russia. Russia. We're looking forward to a hipster avant-garde performance with synthesizers and theremin. It's in Russian. I don't know, I saw... What? Yeah, it's in Russian with I subtitles. Have, I have said on numerous occasions that I will see any production of the Cherry Orchard? The Seagull, Seagull and... Seagull Dollhouse? The Sound of Music. The last time we saw the Cherry Orchard was here in the same theater with Ethan Hawke, which we fell in love with. Let's see how the St. Petersburg Theater stacks up I Cherry Orchard. I can't imagine that they can do better than what happened that night because we ended up at the Corner Bistro eating french fries with Mr. Hawk in the back, what do you call it? Booth. In the bathroom. I said back booth, you said bathroom. Did you eat french fries with Ethan Hawk in the bathroom? Yeah, I didn't tell you about this. It's really all in Russian? Oh my god, I do not remember the Cherry Orchard being this shouty. The story, if you don't know it, is basically Downton Abbey. Like a bunch of old rich Russians trying desperately not to lose their one last piece of property. Which was the Cherry Orchard. Yes. They have accrued a lot of debt and they're having to sell the Cherry Orchard to a dubious gentleman. There's gonna be an auction. He's got a plan. Divvy it up and turn it into vacation homes. And here's where the Downton Abbey element comes in. The mistress of the house says, Vacation homes? How tawdry. It starts off very, very quiet and it builds to a crescendo in the end of the first act. Chekhov is extremely future seeing. Not only does he predict gentrification, they're gonna tear up the cherry orchard and sell it as vacation homes, but it's also post-human. Because in two references, not only does a man give human traits to a bookshelf, but he also gives human traits to the cherry orchard itself, saying that they're people, he can hear voices. I would not call this traditional, I would Ooh, call no. this magical. It's magical both in style and in vibe. It's a completely different cherry orchard from the last one we oh, saw here. Time. I'm big excited time. to get back inside to see what happens. Do they sell or do they not sell? Well, we know what happens. The cherry I would call out the three main leads, but their names are in Russian and mm, I can't pronounce impossible them. Impossible to pronounce. The whole play is about toppling of tradition and moving on and moving forward, which is the theme in all of Chekhov's plays, but in this one I think it's more prevalent. In this show there may be a barrier of language, but there is absolutely no physical barrier between the actors and the audience. Oh, literally like across the aisle, one of the actors was in someone's lap. This show could be retitled simply Russians live. There's an interesting Frank Sinatra moment, a little bit of liberty taken with the text there, an ode to uh, rugged individualism and capitalism. Once again, this is a great production. Modern enough, it's not that avant-garde, it's safe on the modern side. The lead character kind of reminds me of Kanye West in a weird way. There is a weird Kanye vibe here. Yeah, there's a checkoff. Thank you very much because it begins and ends the exact same way. It's not the most challenging piece, it's not the most avant-garde staging, but it's a good night at the theater, and if you haven't seen the uh, Cherry Orchard, by all means, get to the BAM Harvey Theater for a green light. Green light here as well. Yeah.